So today's find, this anchor road for this uh, small uh, damper style anchor, it should be attached via a splice using an appropriate size and style thimble. It should also be attached to this ring, which is what uh, the ring is for. Finally, the road is too short and it also needs a short section of chain between the road and anchor. So here we have a case where the improper style of sacrificial anode has been installed. If you'll notice right here, the end of the sacrificial anode is blocking the stern tube. And what this does is it restricts water flow to the cutlass bearing, which could cause it to overheat and possibly start to damage the shaft or score it. This is the type that should be installed because it allows uh, plenty of water flow to the cutlass bearing right here. So for today's find, we're taking a look at this uh, fixed fire extinguishing system in an engine compartment. Uh, it's got a tag, which is a good thing. However, if you look at the date here, uh, the year was 2016, which means that as these units should be inspected and tagged annually, it's a good five years out of certification and it should be inspected and tagged as soon as possible. Today's find is some badly deteriorated fuel hose. A quick look at the hose with a shine of the light and you can see that it is cracked and deteriorated. The year that it was manufactured, 1993, means this hose is 20 years old and is well past its expected service life. It needs to be replaced immediately. So this is an example of one of the fire extinguishers that was affected by the massive kitty recall a few years back. You can tell this one is a candidate for replacement because it has a vertical pull pin and it's got a plastic handle. A quick look at the year manufacturer, 2016, and that places this unit in the sweet spot of the recall and replacement campaign time frame. For today's find, we have an extremely corroded all chain anchor road. Uh, a quick look at the uh, condition of the chain here and you can see that it is badly corroded and in need of immediate replacement. So today's fine, uh, problems with this uh, propane or LPG storage locker. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it is filled with uh, stuff. Uh, all of this stuff right here should be removed, the bilge pump, you know, your electrical adapters. A propane system must have a dedicated storage locker and dedicated, of course, means nothing else is stored in here. Um, that includes also this little propane bottle here. You would think that uh, that's the place to store it, you know, because it vents if it leaks here, but that's not the case. The locker should not be used as a general storage locker and nothing that is not part of the system should be in here. Another issue, the locker vents onto the cockpit deck. Uh, it should be plumbed instead so that it vents directly overboard should a leak in the system occur. Another issue with this propane locker is that the tank is not secured properly. You can see where they've tried to wedge wood and stuff in here uh, to try to secure it. But what they really need to do is remove all this stuff from the locker and use the mounting bracket right here that's provided. You strap that tank on that mounting bracket and it would eliminate this uh, excessive movement that we have uh, like this right here. So today's find isn't something wrong with the boat we're surveying. It's uh, actually the access to the boat we're surveying. This ladder here uh, is not tied or secured at the top. Ladders should always be secured in place prior to use, and you should have someone hold the bottom of the ladder uh, firmly until they are actually tied and secured properly. Additionally, this ladder is kind of a quasi-extension ladder, and it's not really suitable for the job that is being put to. However, even if you're going to use this, you could secure it right there at those eye bolts so that it at least wouldn't fall back on you or slide to one side or the other. So here we have a boat that has a primary bilge pump and a secondary backup bilge pump. Uh, the problem with this installation, there's a couple of them. One, the backup pump should ideally be located a little bit above the primary pump, maybe about three or four inches, so that it's not resting in gunk and crud and stuff, and it may see some disuse if it doesn't get used often, right, as the backup pump. The other thing is the automatic float switches for them are at the same level, which means that both pumps are going to turn on at the same time. This is uh, kind of redundant and not very uh, efficient. From a power consumption standpoint particularly, uh, the automatic float switch for the backup bilge pump should also be located two or three inches above the primary float switch. 
So for today's find, we're looking in this engine compartment and uh, we see a fixed fire extinguishing system. Although it's not fixed, it's not attached, it's not mounted. Uh, this extinguisher should be uh, removed from this little cubby and mounted properly per the manufacturer's instructions. And in addition to being mounted, it should also be inspected and properly tagged by an authorized service facility to verify proper operation. So here we have a through hole and seacock located below the water line, and it is utilizing improper type of hose. Uh, what it's using is automotive style heater hose. This is definitely not the proper type of hose to be used on a through hole, particularly one located below the water line. So here's something I often see with uh, marine toilets. If you look here, you'll see this hose has no hose clamps installed. Uh, this is the hose that connects the bowl to either the manual or in this case, the uh, electric uh, raw water pump. Uh, this thing is shipped this way, but it definitely is not supposed to be left that way. You always want to have each end of the hose uh, clamped with uh, marine grade stainless steel hose clamps. You can install double clamps if there's sufficient hose barb to allow it. Another issue, uh, the use of uh, residential style twist on uh, wire nuts. Twist on wire nuts uh, have no place on board a boat. Uh, they can vibrate uh, loose easily and a lot of times they'll just fall off leaving an exposed, often energized uh, conductor. So these should be removed and replaced with uh, proper marine grade connectors. So for today's find, the owner has placed on board a water cooler. Uh, the problem with this, one, it's not mounted. And even if it was mounted, uh, the bottle on top is going to fall off in any kind of seaway. So this thing should just be removed. So for today's find, what's wrong with this picture? We have a large uh, single hatch that provides engine compartment access. And the problem with this is the support cylinders have been removed. See, this is where it would go here and there. So in other words, this thing is basically like a, you know, a, a huge uh, flat guillotine, right? If uh, you see the rope that I've had to install on it to, to keep it up, if uh, this thing was uh, to drop on your head, it would just be catastrophic. So, of course, the recommendation is that you would need to replace these cylinders uh, so that the hatch can stay open. You need to maintain the hatch in a positive open position, maintain positive control of the hatch so that it doesn't fall down on you while you're working in the engine compartment. For today's farm, we're looking at the uh, water heater on a mid-sized power boat. So the water heater, uh, it can heat the water either by uh, 115, you know, AC power from the shore power or from the uh, generator, but it also has a heat exchanger. And this heat exchanger is plumbed into the engine coolant system so that when it runs water through the uh, the cool uh, from the engine cycles to the water heater and then that also heats the water well the problem with this one is is the fitting is broken off here uh, for the heat exchanger and what that does of course it for one thing it means that it's not going to work on the heat exchanger mode but the even worse more important thing is that the uh, the engine coolant will just run out if it if the engine's running it just pumps it out of this hose and then it's open hose now so this of course needs to be replaced and repaired immediately before the engine is uh is operated okay so today's fine <clears throat> we have batteries that are mounted in trays which is fine but the uh the mounting hardware for them has been removed uh you're going to have these brackets like this right here that should be installed on each of the batteries to hold them in place and secure them uh, again, I've harped on this in probably a number of videos. Batteries have to be secured so that there's no more movement than one inch in any direction. And also, we'll look here a little bit. Corrosion on the uh, the terminals it needs to be addressed as well. So for today's find, we're looking at a mid-sized power boat. And we're checking out the engines. And we're looking at the exhaust manifolds and risers. These are the manifolds. These are the risers or elbows. You can see a lot of corrosion here on these and if you look close, you can also see uh, evidence of leaking at the uh, the gaskets and stuff. Manifolds and risers uh, are consumable items. They're not supposed to last as long as the engine, uh, and they should be replaced at intervals recommended by the manufacturer. Typically, uh, four to five years, you would pull these things and inspect them, but as the Big cost is going to be getting them off. Uh, it would be false economy not just to replace them, even if they tested good after four or five years, depending on where the boat's located. If it's in salt water, of course, it's going to be a lot worse than in fresh water. 
But uh, tip of the day, replace your exhaust manifold and risers or pull them and inspect them as recommended by the manufacturer. So for today's find, we're looking at a mid-sized power boat and we're checking out the engines and we're looking at the exhaust manifolds and risers. These are the manifolds, these are the risers or elbows. You can see a lot of corrosion here on these. And if you look close, you can also see uh, evidence of leaking at the, uh, the gaskets and stuff. Manifolds and risers uh, are consumable items. They're not supposed to last as long as the engine uh, and they should be replaced at intervals recommended by the manufacturer. Typically, uh, four to five years, you would pull these things and inspect them, but as the big cost is gonna be getting them off, uh, it would be false economy not just to replace them, even if they tested good after four or five years, depending on where the boat's located. If it's in salt water, of course, it's gonna be a lot worse than in fresh water. But uh, tip of the day, replace your exhaust manifold and risers or pull them and inspect them as recommended by the manufacturer. So for today's find, we're looking at some out drives, stern drives, uh, aluminum uh, out drives. And you can see that they are suffering from uh, galvanic corrosion, both the drive and the gimbal units themselves here. Uh, these are the sacrificial anodes. What are left of them, they're gone. You can see where the... Uh, paint is boiling off here for it and you can also see uh, along the edges of the, uh, the lower unit you can see where they're suffering from uh, the effects of galvanic corrosion as well um, and this is the case with, uh, with both units this boat's been kept in the water uh, and without sufficient uh, protection uh, cathodic protection to the sacrificial anodes that's what they do they protect the units from uh, being uh, eat away like this right here.